You're watching The Code Guy, and in this one, we're going to talk about how to make our code more reusable. In the functions video, we moved out this function from the guess the number program, but we can go further than that and create reusable packages. What is a package? A package is something in Python that you can import into your program. For instance, this is the random package, and it has a function in it called randint. So from random package, import randint. And we can create libraries just like this. So how do we do it? PyCharm makes it really, really easy. Go to our project folder, new Python package, and we're going to create a package called common. And common tells us that this is a package that's going to be shared throughout our programs. So it's created a folder here called common. And underneath, you've got a single file called underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot py. We could create this manually just by creating a directory and then creating a blank file within. So now I want to move out this input function so I can use it elsewhere. How do I do that? Very, very simple. We're going to create a new file. You could put it in init, but I strongly suggest against it. And we're going to call it input validation. And here we got our brand new file. I'm just going to create a comment contains input validation functions. That will just tell people what this package is all about. And then in input validation, what exactly are we going to do? Well, we're going to go back to, I guess, the number, and we're going to take this get numeric input, and we're going to cut it out, and we're going to paste it in here. And I'm going to call it get numeric because it's already called input validation. PyCharm already saves this for us. If you have another idea, remember to save it. And then we can actually close this. So in our program, we're still going to need the get numeric input function. So how are we going to grab that? Well, it's quite simple. Just like we grabbed from random here, we're going to do from common dot input validation import get numeric. And I'm going to get numeric as get numeric input. And what that does is it basically says get the numeric function, but give it the name get numeric input. So now when we run this program, it should still work as if get numeric input was written in here. Enter your guess, like 50, was too high. 23 was the right number. So the program works exactly as it did before, but now we don't have to worry about that. And if I want to write a new program, new Python file, I'm going to call it test. And we're going to do our from common dot input validation import get numeric. And then in here, we can have a function that says get numeric into a variable called test. And we're just going to run this. And you see it detects a number, so it finished straight away. If we run it again and type in something crap, it'll ask us to enter again. There is a problem with this, and that is get numeric may not be a guess. What we need to do is have the ability to pass in the prompt we want to use. So I'm going to open up our input validation again. So to make this function more reusable, we want to be able to change this. And also, because it's a number, we might have a particular range we're looking at. So that is what we're going to add to this function. So in our get numeric, I'm going to put prompt text. We also want range start and range end. OK, so how do we start changing this program? First, this thing. We need to change it to prompt text. So if it is a digit, we're then going to check if it's in the range. If the input num is greater than or equal to range start and input num is less than or equal to range end. And Python actually has a nice way of handling this. And the way we do that is we can move input num between here. So range start is less than or equal to input number, which is less than or equal to range. And that will do exactly the same function, although it's shorter. I'm going to set that to minus one because someone might actually want to enter zero. OK, so let us test this out. Close this again. Go back to our guess number. Get numeric input. Prompt text. And we're going to say enter your guess. Range start is going to be zero. And range end is going to be 100 because that's our maximum number. OK, so we don't really handle, handle error messages in here, so I'm going to take that out. But we might want to start, and we would just add that as we're going through. We've entered our enter the guess, we've entered our start range, we've entered our end range. So let's test this out now. If we stop this program and run it, enter your guess. And we are going to try, crap, doesn't work. We are going to try 101, doesn't work. We are going to try minus 10, 
doesn't work. And then we're going to try 50. And actually, that should have been 1 or 100. But you get the point. And actually, I've broken something because this is no longer working. Oh, I know what's wrong with this. We actually need to check that input num is an int because that's an int and that is an int. If this number is a digit, we're going to cast it to the number. So that will now check it. And if it's not in range, we are going to set it back to minus one. And let's actually enter some error messaging here. Print. So I'm going to do an F string and we're going to do input out of range. And we're going to do range start and range end. And I'm actually going to prefix this with not. So if that is not in this range, then we're going to set the input number to minus one. And we're going to print out an error message that we're out of range. So let's add an else here. And then we're going to put print input specified must be a number. Let's go back to, I guess, the number and run it. So now we are going to enter a guess of crap, 101. And let's try 50. Guess was too high and the program is running normally now. So here we took our function. We added a load of validation and error messages to it. And we added some parameters so that we can actually control how it works now. So it's a lot more functional than it was before. But the key thing is, if I now go back to our test file and run this again, those changes we made, and if we run this now, it is going to do exactly what we did over in the other program. In this one, I've shown you how to create reusable packages that you can then use throughout your programs. If you have any questions or you found this video particularly useful, then please leave a comment. It'll help me out a lot. In our next video, which will be shown top left anytime now, we are going to talk about how to create objects in Python, which will take your coding to a whole new level. And with that, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you on the next one.